Now, we are entering into the different types of meta models. The first one is very simple what we have discussed already y equals m x plus c, but if it is quadratic I will write it as beta naught plus beta 1 x plus beta 2 x square. So, I am just giving a generic form to that I am saying I am going to call it w i x i. Okay. So, let us say that i runs from 0 to m, okay. m is 2 let us say. So, your expression will be w 0 x 0 is what 1 plus w 1 x 1 plus w 2 x square that is all. So, now you can use this guy for anything for any n dimensions all that, okay. but this is assuming that it is only one dimension. If you have two dimensions then you have to have one of this plus interactions also. Okay. You need to have an a i a j and then you will have to have uh, x i x j also okay. so that you can and uh, how do you decide upon that is you can use a Pascal's triangle. You know what a Pascal's triangle is 1 x y x y x squared y squared x squared y y squared x oh correct only no 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 sorry x cube sorry and then you can keep building this. So, it is called a Pascal's triangle right and uh, for 3 dimensions beyond that which you cannot do for 3 triangles it will be a pyramid kind of a structure. So, 1 So, it will go like this. Okay. So, you can build it like this x square y square z square and then it will be um, so, you can build that okay. and of course, beyond this I cannot draw 4 dimensions, but the deal is the question is if you are going to approximate uh, your data points in 2 dimensions with a quadratic then I need to take 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 coefficients I need to find. So, minimum n times 2 number of coefficients was 6 12 points I require okay. or if you said um, you know I want to have a cubic then 6 plus 4 is 10. So, you can keep doing like that, okay. but there are also other ways in which you can find out the number of coefficients because Pascal triangle is for our basic understanding, but there are expressions n times n minus 2 divided by d minus 3 d plus 3 or something you can find the number of coefficients that is not a problem. Okay. Okay. So, we will introduce the generic regression analysis now which is eventually which will also let you find your coefficients which is the w that we saw in the previous slide. Okay. What is the idea behind the uh, regression analysis? It is a relationship between two or more variables. Okay. Obviously, there is a dependent variable, there is an independent variable, but what you should also understand is there is no uh, causal relationship okay, because this is just data mathematically it does that. Okay. Uh, one example that people usually give is there was a um, people checked in the west okay. they checked the blood pressure of people in different strata and then they figured out that uh, people who have higher degrees had lesser blood pressures they had a PhD or maybe double PhD or something like that they had lesser blood pressures than someone who had a high school dropout or something like that. Okay. So, they just said okay, what is your education they took different attributes right. So, one of the columns was their education. So, they looked at those two data blood pressure and education and then they saw that there was a direct relationship. So, whoever had higher degree they had lesser. So, that is just a data analysis. Okay. They also have an explanation for that what they are saying is remotely they are connecting not remotely they are saying that with higher education probably you are exposed more you are in a better position. So, you know you have more exposure to staying healthy and all that. So, your blood pressure is under control whereas the other ones do <coughs> meager jobs and they do not have time to bother about their health and stuff like that. Okay. <coughs> but the important point is it is not a causal relationship. Okay. So, uh, when you do a regression analysis you cannot say this is the cause and that is the effect. Okay. So, the basic idea is your uh, independent variable is your uh, x 
and your dependent variable is your y that is what we are talking about here. When I am changing my x I want to find out what my y is. So, this is this is a this is causal relationship vitamin C intake and life expectancy I want to get this curve that is all ok. This is something that I want you to pay attention. linear regression do not take your perspective of linear, your perspective of linear is this is a linear equation this is a non linear equation and a quadratic equation correct this is what your perspective is now just but I did not say linear equation what did I have said here I have said linear regression what are you regressing you are regressing the coefficients regressing means taking errors and then finding. So, you are regressing the coefficients you are not regressing the equation. So, this nonlinear equation is still linear regression because my coefficients are still linear ok. So, do not say I do nonlinear regression because I, I use a cubic response surface no you might still do you might you might do a nonlinear regression that is a different story. But what I am saying is just because your equation is nonlinear does not mean that you are doing a nonlinear regression is still only linear regression often times just figure that one out ok. Anyway, in this particular case we are considering only one independent variable the relationship between the dependent and the independent variable is linear in nature the changes in y are I mean in this particular case not in linear regression in this particular case ok. So, the changes in y are assumed to be caused by changes in x that is the assumption basic assumption right. So, now you represent this as beta naught plus beta 1 x or if you want for your e c this thing uh, m sorry c plus m x that is what we are looking at ok and often we stop here, but the general description is there is always an error that is associated with your model and people usually say that this error can be approximated using a normal distribution with 0 mean and some standard deviation ok. And we know that the beta naught is the intersection with the y axis and beta 1 is the slope that you already know y equals m x plus c right and epsilon is the error term. <coughs> Now, what we are saying is these are your points data points and you are fitting this blue line here this is the equation of this line. What I want to find I want to find my beta naught and beta 1 why is that a finding problem because if I change my beta 1 and beta naught this equation is going to change beta naught has changed the slope has changed that you will agree. Now, I will reduce it this way beta naught has changed the slope has changed. So, like this I can do I do not know infinite number of lines the question is which of this line is good. Finding which of this line is good is not a problem provided you are given the criteria. Someone walks into this room and asks me which of these students are the best student. It depends on the criteria that you are asking based on the exam that you gave based on the interaction in the class based on the knowledge that they have developed because these are all not related ok based on the knowledge that they have gained out of this based on the amount of implementation that they have done after taking your class this is the criteria this is what we discussed yesterday right the criteria is important that lets you make the decision ok. So, once you have finalized the criteria then it will either be maxima or minima of the criteria let us say it is a grade is my criteria then the best student is the one who gets the maximum grade so, again interaction it is maximum number of questions interesting questions who have kept me in conversation for long maximum of that ok. 
So, now what do you think will be the criteria? A simple command, what is the criteria? We have already seen it is the error. So, it is a very interesting regression analysis teaches us life okay because it is a compromise estimate you cannot find a line that will pass through all the points if you make real life connections to each of these points okay this is what your friends want this is what your parents want if you have a girlfriend this is what she wants and out of everything this is what your professor wants Okay, and out of everything you have only 24 hours and limited capabilities to do each one of these. So, whoever you are you cannot fit everything for today you will do this since I have a class today I will have a line that passes through this since I have a class today I will go and attend that class for sure. So, I will spend more time with the professor stuff. Okay, I cannot spend time with my parents or friends whatever I cannot spend with my whatever I cannot go play today I cannot work out today. Okay. So, life what it says is it is always a trade off and it is always a compromise at that point in time you need to know what should be weighted more meaning weighted means not the W A I T. W E I G H T okay that that weight I am talking about okay. So, actually regression analysis teaches you life okay. So, that is an interesting part uh, and you will never be take it from me you know I am few years elder than you so that you can take it from me okay you will never be able to satisfy everything okay. So, it is a good idea to satisfy one at a time that is all okay then you will have a better chance sometimes you might have to leave out something in total that is an outlier in your data <laughs> that will make the fit much better okay. You have a friend who keeps on comes in, in the evening and then you know uh, buys you something but then keeps on negative influence okay and this is happening that is my my professor is telling this. So, you go back and then you do not feel like coming back to the lab in the night okay. So, that is really negative effect okay you should really get rid of that friend here okay <laughs> that is a good idea actually. So, it is an outlier sometimes you will have to have an outlier. So, that is why when you do a correlation plot your friend will be in the negative correlation side you know <laughs> what all influences me to go to the lab your friend will be in the negative correlation. So, you will have to eliminate that and then immediately you will see there will be a performance increase anyway going back to this okay. So, our simple linear regression as I pointed out we just use only this equation, but there is also an error we will see how this error comes and how this error is usually built. This particular term that beta naught plus beta 1 x it represents the variation in y that can be explained okay that is all. There is also an unexplained term that is what in principle your r squared captures your r squared says this is the information that is explained by the model it 98 means your model there are 2 3 different ways people look at it. But from a statistical perspective what it says is no model can be explained 100 percent because it is random because tomorrow you generate one more point your model itself will have to be adjusted a little bit okay. So, what you need to know is this it is not enough if you predict you need to be able to tell what is the confidence that I have in my prediction okay. So, uh, uh, that is why anyway let me not make that comment okay. So, uh, uh, it is not enough if you predict in a probabilistic sense you will also also have to say what is the confidence that you have okay that is when that r squared kind of a thing comes into picture. Given that x and y are observed you want to find the best parameters beta naught and beta 1. Uh, so, if this error is 0 then that is the best beta naught and beta 1 that you can have that is what it says okay. okay. So, what are the assumptions that goes into linear regression if you remember I told you that epsilon follows a normal distribution with 0 and some standard uh, sorry some some standard deviation okay. The observed data are statistically independent 
it is usually called IID okay. What is IID? Identical independent distributor, they are identical samples independent and independently distributed okay. So, each error is also independent, this error is not dependent on this error, this error is not dependent on that error, they are dependent on the fit but not on each other okay. Because if I change this error, will this error also get better not necessarily, this error might actually get worse. If you take a nonlinear equation you can understand that thing okay. Each error is also independent and is described by a normal distribution that is what we told with a mean of 0 and a constant standard deviation okay. These are for theoretical purposes these discussion come into picture. There are also people who try to go and approximate this standard deviation and reuse this okay. So, uh, um, what is it that I wanted to tell in this I forgot okay. So, each error is uh, follows a normal distribution and then it follows ah, since this epsilon uh, which is the error that we are talking about has a 0 mean the mean of this guy okay the line the mean of this guy for this particular stuff since I mean take an equation y equals whatever it is a linear equation. So, beta naught plus beta 1 x plus error right. So, we are saying that x is random. So, the mean of that okay will be the mean of that mu also which we are saying that the error of that the, the mean of that error is also 0. So, it will be you are only adding this one. So, this is equivalent to this that is what we are saying okay. So, that line will be just beta naught plus beta 1 x okay and then anywhere else you need to have this error estimate to understand. This uh, r squared kind of gives you this error bound that is what it says how much of the variation is explained. If it says r is 1 it says the explanation the variation is fully explained meaning it is like this. Oh, okay. It will be here though it will not be there because the variation is fully explained. It the line has to go through here and it will be a meaning it is a deterministic line it is not a distribution there the it is very clearly observed that is all. Okay. Now, the least square method this we have already discussed but for the sake of completion we will do it here again. So, there are 4 points the distance in each of them x 1 y 1 x 2 y 2 x 3 y 3. So, you have error 1 error 2 error 3 error n okay. Now, what you do this is important this arrangement of the data is important okay. Error 1 is y 1 minus y hat error 2 is this error this error and then yeah error 3 would have been this error and error n would have been this error okay. Now, y 1 minus this guy is this okay y 1 hat how did I get because I knew the form beta naught hat plus beta 1 hat x 1 this beta 1 and beta naught hat are the same for all of them. I am just changing only my x 1 x 2 x n ok. Now, what I am going to do is this I need to beta naught and beta 1 of the best fit line are the values that minimize the sum of the squares. So, I am just writing them as error squared sum them like this ok. Epsilon i squared is used rather than epsilon i because you might have negative as well as positive values as I told you can also use y i minus absolute value of beta naught hat plus beta beta i x i sorry 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 the absolute of the whole thing you can also use that ok. But there is a reason for using the squared it has it brings in very nice statistical properties and then you have this uh, uh, you know your normal distribution varying and all that. that is the reason that it is used. People have shown that using the absolute deviation also will not make a lot of difference. So, there are some interesting properties for instance your uh, x bar y bar they will intersect on the line for sure ok. It is the mean of x bar sorry x and y ok they will pass through the line then no other it, it might not pass through any other points, but x bar and y bar the intersection it will pass through some interesting properties are there ok passes through the mean some of each measured error uh, is you are you are trying to force them to be equal to 0. 
Now, this is what I, we spoke about right the sum of the uh, regression and the sum of the errors and the total sum of the squares. So, this y bar is the mean of the y data. So, this is the y data whether we are talking about and this is my y bar. What I am going to do is I am going to talk about my line from meaning the fit from this red line how good it is. So, what I am saying y i minus y bar. So, that is my total sum of the squares ok. Now, I am decomposing this into 2, 1 is the actual point and the predicted value ok. Similarly, the actual point minus sorry the predicted value minus the y bar the average that you can have. So, I am decomposing this into 2 and uh, this guy is the orange one is the error sum of the squares and the green one is your regression because this is comes from your regression. In case if my line was here instead of this blue line I had this line then this is the regression difference with respect to my y ok and this is a this still it is a different thing this error is still the error that comes as a residual sometimes is also called as a residual sum of the squares here r is not used because we do not want to confuse regression errors and residual errors ok. This error the between the point and your prediction the actual point and your prediction is the um, residual or the uh, error sum of the squares ok. So, you can also write r squared and ANOVA expressions from this. Okay, they say uh, I do not exactly remember SSE by SSR or SSR by SSE if you are comfortable with that you can use that, but uh, this is the uh, idea ok. Okay. So, does that mean that I can only do one variable or I cannot fit complex uh, curves or surfaces, no that is not true. You can also do multivariate linear regression and we will also see how you can adapt this for nonlinear regressions also. So, what does multivariate mean? It means that you have more than one independent variable right now we just saw x right. So, you can have x 1, x 2, x 3, x n also and this is what the equation looks like. It is just beta a naught plus beta 1, x 1, beta 2, x 2, beta p, x p plus epsilon. We have not taken the interactions. So, we are just going to directly go here and we are we are going to take a geometry idea to see how this linear uh, sorry the minimum least square is achieved ok. Given n sets of data y 1 to y n you have beta naught plus beta 1 you are able to predict this guy that is the whole point ok. This beta naught beta 1 beta 2 beta p beta n everything is the same for each of these data points you understand right. For each of this y 1 y 2 y n my beta naught beta 1 will remain the same what will vary only my x's are going to vary that is all. So, this immediately tells you that you can write this in a matrix form. So, what we are going to do is, is we are going to write it in this form ok. So, y I know is a vector beta of course, you know it is a beta beta naught beta. So, now I just need to write it in this form that is all. So, I will say beta naught plus beta 1 x 1 1 beta 2 x 1 2 beta p x 1 p that is all you need to write ok. There is a reason to write it this way we will see what it is. So, I am just writing because you remember this right we write it like this. So, I am just rewriting this as error equal to y minus x beta we wanted to minimize this error that is all you wanted to do there is a reason to write it this way. So, error equal to y 1 minus y 2 minus this matrix x matrix times beta naught to beta p. Now, what is it that you want? You wanted your error to be minimum or minimum or 0 this is what you want this guy to be. So, this y and x beta in a geometric sense can be written like or can be represented like this in a vector form ok. So, I can have x beta do not look at the bottom part yet y ok. 
and the error is the line connecting this guy and this guy. So, the question is when will that error if this is a line that is going to connect this guy and this guy when will that connecting line have a minimum value. It is here it will be like this if it was here it will be like this if it was here it will be like this. So, which of this will be minimum it is not 0 please understand the question is the question is different I am not asking when that guy when that guy will be 0 ah, when y is on the on x beta, but the minimum ok this is a turned out to be a good example the minimum one way of looking at that is also projection correct when will that guy lie on the top of this guy when you project ok he should fall exactly on top of it ok right now with an extended version also you project ok. So, when you project it should fall on that guy exactly ok. So, when will that happen when will your when you project this guy he should fall exactly on this ok when will that happen when So, this eta will take minimum value when it is perpendicular your normal gradient everything will be like that only. So, sometimes when people make pictures they make a mistake they do this and then they will not draw it perpendicular they will just draw it something like this <laughs> they are try, trying cons, they are just saying uh, conceptually they are explaining right the, the explanation was not this. So, they will leave out that and people will say that is not optimum because it is not perpendicular ok. So, that is that is where the idea is ok. So, when your when your error is perpendicular to your x beta between your x beta and y that is when your error is going to be minimal ok. So, this is the geometric sense right how are we going to use it to uh, in a mathematical sense we will see how to do that ok we are going to just use this relationship x beta should be perpendicular to your or the other way around the error should be perpendicular to your x beta for minimization. You need to know little bit of matrix you need to be able to appreciate, but I am sure you can do that ok. If two vectors are orthogonal what do you know the dot product of the vectors is 0 ok. So, the two products that we are talking about is x beta and epsilon ok they are equal to 0, but there is also a matrix rule that says a dot b is equal to a transpose b. So, what I am doing is I am making this guy transpose time error equal to 0. There is another rule that says a b transpose is equal to b transpose a. So, I am just writing this in a slightly different manner this is a b transpose. So, I am going to write it as a transpose b transpose. So, beta transpose time x transpose epsilon equal to 0 then what I can do <coughs> is I just keep this guy and I replace this epsilon as y minus x beta because we know that y equal to x beta hat plus epsilon. So, I am just replacing this epsilon by y minus x beta. Then I can write this expression as beta transpose x transpose times y right that I bring it to the right side and then I say beta transpose x transpose x times beta here it is just I am just taking a dot product here that is all ok. There are two quantities and we are just equating each one of them ok. Now, what happens is what is that we wanted to find we always want to find only beta that is what you want to find in this entire equation you know y you know x you want to find your beta that is what you want to find. So, I want to find beta and I am isolating the other things what is the other things x transpose x inverse x transpose y what is this quantity got to do it has only x values that is all this capital X is nothing but this guy you already know this this is nothing but your coordinate points ok. You take point number 1 this is x 1 1 1 2 meaning the second dimension 
the nth dimension I take this point nth point in in dimension 1 in dimension 2 in dimension n what is its coordinate you understand right. So, let us take just 3 coordinates ok I give you 3 points, but imagine that these are in space. So, I am saying minus 1 minus 1 minus 1 and then I am saying minus 1 minus 1 1 and then I am saying 1 correct yeah it can be 1 1 uh, minus minus 1 0. So, it can be anything that is not one ok. So, for this point this guy will be minus 1 minus 1 1 for this guy it will be minus 1 minus 1 minus 1 and then 1 1 0 minus 1 0 that is all. So, it is just the spatial coordinates that is all your x matrix is nothing but the spatial coordinates that is all ok. Of course, you will have issues if you have 2 points here and then you had 10 points here in a design space because you are going to invert this you will transpose this and all that so you will get some because you are going to invert this you will have a transpose of that and all that. So, there will be numerical singularities ok. So, this you know it is only matrix inversion and transpose that is all from your coordinate matrix and why you know the values at those points. So, by just doing this you can get your beta by using this simple principle that is all you are not doing any optimization no minimization nothing just by using a simple projection algorithm not even algorithm approach we are able to do this simple. So, this is called the Gramian matrix. this is for your information not lot of people use the terminology it is called the Gramian matrix ok. So, uh, yeah so you can also use a polynomial regression it is used to capture the nonlinear relationship between dependent and independent variables a special case of multivariate linear although the model is nonlinear see this is what I told although the model is nonlinear independent variable x it is a linear in parameters beta naught beta 1 beta p solving the unknown parameters is still a linear statistical problem estimation ok. The same idea oops I am sorry this is all you need to solve for that is all ok. So, whatever we discuss right now it covers polynomial response surface ok. So, usually when people say response surface modeling they talk about polynomial response surface, but off late then people move to surrogates they call it meta models. Now, uh, people are also calling emulators they are using uh, data mining techniques or data learning machine learning techniques to do stuff ok. So, in that there are going to be 3 techniques that we will talk about one is polynomial response surface which we have already talked about uh, polynomial models. The second one that we will talk about is radial basis function. So, if you talk in if you think about all these things the type of functions are going to change that is all the form, but uh, there is little bit more to that meaning the moment the type of the function changes you have more control there is little bit more parameters it is intelligent parameters are built in by changing those parameters you can get some shapes that are not uh, that you might not be able to get with polynomial as simple as polynomial ok. But you need to know it should not be an overkill 